Israeli airstrikes targeted homes in southern Gaza, witnesses said on Friday, February 23, adding to what eight groups describe as an increasingly hopeless humanitarian situation despite efforts towards new truce talks. An Israeli delegation, led by David Barnier, head of the Mossad intelligence agency, has arrived in Paris to unblock truce discussions in the war with Hamas militants. His trip follows what the health ministry in Hamasran Gaza said was the death of more than 100 people over the previous day. Israeli bombardment destroyed one house and left a gaping hole in the earth east of Rafa, on the border with Egypt, where about 1.4 million Gazans have converged in a futile search to escape the fighting. We were sleeping in our house when we heard the sound of a missile, said Abdul Hamid Abu Elanin. We rushed to the site and found people muttered and injured in the strike which completely erased the two-story home. Witnesses reported several other houses targeted during the night, and an AFP reporter described heavy strikes in the city of Khan Yunus to the north, as well as in Rafa itself. Israel has threatened to send troops into the packed southern city of Rafa, drawing international criticism. More than four months of fighting and bombardment have flattened much of Gaza and pushed its population of around two. Four million to the brink of famine as disease spreads, according to the United Nations. We have reached a point of extreme poverty and hunger, 62-year-old Zorifa Hamad, a displaced woman living in a camp in northern Gaza, told AFP. Children are dying of hunger. The war started after Hamas's unprecedented October 7 attack, which resulted in the deaths of about 1,160 people in Israel, mostly civilians. According to an AFP tally of official figures, Hamas militants also took hostages, 130 of whom remain in Gazi, including 30 presumed dead, according to Israel. Israel's retaliatory offensive has killed at least 29. 514 people, mostly women and children, according to the latest count by Gaza's health ministry. The toll has put pressure on U.S. President Joe Biden to rein in its ally Israel, which it provides with billions of dollars in military aid. White House envoy Brett McGook held talks this week with Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant in Tel Aviv after meeting with other mediators in Cairo who had met Hamas chief Ismail Honiyeh earlier this week. A Hamas source said the new plan proposes a six-week pause in the conflict and the release of between 200 and 300 Palestinian prisoners in exchange for 35 to 40 hostages still held by Hamas. Barnier and his U.S. counterpart from the CIA helped broker a week-long truce in November that saw the release of 80 Israeli hostages in exchange for 240 Palestinian prisoners held in Israeli jails. Washington's National Security Council spokesman, John Kirby, told journalists that so far the discussions were going well, while Israeli war cabinet member Benny Gantz spoke of the first signs that indicate the possibility of progress. At the Naja Hospital in Rafay on Friday, mourners grieved over two dead children whose faces poked through white shrouds. Mahmoud Jargon said he had no hope in the negotiations because the intention is to annihilate the Palestinian people. Fierce gun battles broke out in the neighboring Saitan district, where tanks are deployed, according to witnesses. The army said helicopters were in action to support targeted raids in the area. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has unveiled a plan for post-war Gaza that envisages the territory's civil affairs being run by Palestinian officials without links to Hamas. Even after the war, the Israeli army would have indefinite freedom to operate throughout Gaza to prevent any resurgence of terror activity, according to the proposals. The Israeli plan was swiftly rejected by the Palestinian Authority and drew criticism from the United States. U.S. National Security Council spokesman 
John Kirby, said Washington had been consistently clear with our Israeli counterparts about what was needed in post-war Gaza. The Palestinian people should have a voice and a vote. Through a revitalized Palestinian authority, he said. We don't believe in a reduction of the size of Gaza. We don't want to see any forcible displacement of Palestinians outside Gaza and. Of course, we don't want to see Gaza dominated or ruled or governed over by Hamas. Asked about the plan, during a visit to Argentina, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said he would reserve judgment until seeing all the details. But said Washington was against any reoccupation of Gaza after the war. Senior Hamas official Osama Hamdan dismissed Netanyahu's plan as unworkable. When it comes to the day after in the Gaza Strip, Netanyahu is presenting ideas which he knows fully well will never succeed, Hamdan told reporters in Beirut. A UN report said Friday that gross human rights violations had been committed by all parties in Israel and the Palestinian territories and demanded accountability and justice to foster peace. The war has also heightened tensions in the occupied West Bank, where the Israeli army said a Palestinian militant it killed in a drone strike late on Thursday was en route to carry out another shooting attack. The strike came hours after three gunmen opened fire at queuing cars on a West Bank highway, killing one man. Far-right finance minister Bezalel Smotrich announced that in response to the attack, the government would submit plans for the construction of some 3,300 additional housing units in the nearby settlement of Mil Adumim. The U.S. National Security Council spokesman said he was disappointed with the announcement, adding, This administration maintains our firm opposition to settlement expansion.